Good morning everyone, I'm here with Rob from the amazing YouTube channel Walkabout with Rob and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. We're going to be strolling around the suburb that was Rosalie, now part of Paddington, and we're starting here at Fernberg, which is the which is now government house where the governor lives, but it was built in about 1865 for Johann Christian Husler, after whom the street is named in Paddington. And it was a design by Benjamin Backhouse and it's a very grand home as many of you will know. And that's the start of our trip. Come along with us. Um, I've given Marianne one of my older cameras and she's trying to use it. It's going very well so far. <laughs> as a videographer, I make a good historian. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the challenge is on. So um, yeah. we're, we're going to be shooting together but editing our own videos. Um, so I think this yeah. will work really well. Yeah, I cool. Think it will. And we've got our notes. We've we do, notes, yeah. yes. As I was saying to Rob, I actually have a really bad memory for uh, dates, which is a failing as a historian, but we'll get there. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. We don't know where there is, but we'll get there. <laughs> It's a bit of a miserable day for a walk, but it's also nice and cool, so that's good. And the city's hiding in some fog. It looks beautiful. And across the road, there's the beautiful grounds of Government House, it's still on a huge parcel of land. One of these days, I'll get around to visiting when the house is open for a tour. It's interesting walking around the suburb. There's, um, I always say it'd be a terrible suburb to go for a run in. There's so many hills around here, but it's actually interesting because in general in Brisbane and in this area of Rosalie, the general trend was that the higher land was the most sought after. And that's where the biggest, grandest, more wealthy family homes were built. Um, and then down, the further down you got was where the workers housing and more affordable homes were built. So it's a trend across Brisbane, but definitely noticeable in this area. So we were just chatting with a local who we bumped into on the street, Tony. He was lovely. He's lived here for around 50 years and knew a lot of the local information. And he was telling us that this was a bakery, Barnes Bakery. We're up on Fernberg Road on the corner of Boys Road and opposite me over here is what was the Rosalie police station. So there's a fantastic photo of it, which is taken sometime during um, William Davis's occupation of the station. It was actually built as a private house, the original building on this site that's shown in the photos. And then it was purchased by the police and converted to a police station the same year. This one that survives here though, was the replacement building, which was built in 1911. And there's some great plans that survive of this one. It's not clear what happened to the former police station it was either demolished moved but yeah it's uh you can tell that it's quite a different building compared to the other houses around this area it's got a little bit of a different roof line and that's because it was a purpose-built police station and then it's been extended into a family home afterwards So I was talking about how the more affordable homes were built on the lower areas of the suburb here's a few perfect examples three in a row what are called pyramid roofed cottages. They were small, simple homes, normally with a square footprint and four rooms. And the pyramid roof, of course, and the steeper the roof in general, the older the house. Just a little research tip there for you. The other thing to note is the separate and lower veranda roofs. On the one on the far right, you can see it's got the convex uh, roof, which is most typical. And I'd say the other two have probably been changed because it's easier to resheet. But yeah, some examples of the, the exact type of workers accommodation that would have populated these lower areas of Rosalie back in the day. We keep getting distracted. Oh, it's in Blackburn. And we've um, crossed over to have a look at this beautiful place, Federation style. We saw a stone. Sadly, it's in Latin. Anyone speak Latin? I can see Dewey. He gets around. That's Arch Archbishop Dewey. And Dunn. Yeah. Anyone who knows their Catholic history in Brisbane or Latin, please let us know what that says. Hang on, Rob's on it. He's taking I don't a photo. I have no idea. I was going to get Google Translate. Does that do Latin? Old Latin? Yes, it does. Oh, okay. Yes. We're wondering if this is maybe the presbytery attached to the sacred 
uh, Heart Church. I read up about one that said that there was an early example of a ferro concrete building, which I thought maybe was reinforced concrete. It looks possible. The gorgeous Federation era, which is sort of 1890 to 1910 era style home. And there's a little religious statue down there. First I thought the blue was one of those plastic clam shells, but no, it's just blue stones. This is the gorgeous Sacred Heart Church. Rob has organised for us to go inside and I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty goddamn excited. Oh, I really shouldn't have said that. Sorry. Am I going to be struck by lightning? It's always a chance when I'm near a church. So here is the absolutely incredible Sacred Heart Church at what was Rosalie. This was built in 1918 and it was to a design by GHM Addison who actually did quite a few buildings for the Catholic Church. This is one of four churches that he did in a similar style, Romanesque style, but this one is thought to be one of the most impressive and was described as, just let me refer to my notes, let's see what was it? one of the most handsome parish churches in the commonwealth there you go that's high praise now dewey was an interesting character he basically set about a massive building program for the catholic church from the early 1900s and over the 50 years of his stewardship basically i think i read that something like 100 churches were built and something like 400 significant buildings were built for the catholic church in queensland basically we can credit him with many of these remarkable and gorgeous churches that survive in brisbane this one certainly is impressive inside and out and as is common with a lot of churches particularly catholic churches they were generally built up on a high point in the suburbs so that they could be viewed from the areas all around and um, sort of draw the eye towards heaven which is what the interiors were designed to do as well with their high arch ceilings It's actually quite a Catholic church hub up here. You've got the former presbytery across the road there, Maris Brothers College, the Sacred Heart Church, the Sacred Heart Convent is just around the corner, and then there's another building across the road here that's now used as church offices. So quite the little hub. Oh wow, look at that lead light, oh the windows, it's quite modern isn't it, the stained glass. I better keep my voice down, I don't naturally have an inside voice, especially when it comes to beautiful old buildings, so I'll try and be a bit quiet. Rob's currently having a religious experience. I sort of got a bit overawed and um, was forgetting to film. This place is just so impressive. Absolutely gorgeous, quite unlike any other church I've seen. Um, I have been in a few, which is quite funny considering I'm an atheist, but just absolutely stunning. This marble is absolutely incredible. It's so, so beautiful and lots of it. Ever since I was a little kid and used to go to the Pancake Manor on Charlotte Street in Brisbane, which is in an old church hall, St. Luke's, I think it was, I've always been intrigued by these staircases and behind the scenes areas of churches. And we've been given special access to come and have a look up on the balcony where the organ is. And I can't tell you how excited I am to be let loose in this church in a respectful way. Oh my gosh, it is absolutely beautiful. Oh, just gorgeous. Look at that view from up here. Are you impressed, Rob? So good. Are you impressed? I've, I'm as impressed as two impressed things nailed together. <laughs> Just 
stunning. Oh, I bet it sounds amazing. It might be a bit hard to see in the video, but you can really get a good view of these stained glass windows up here. I'll try and find out a bit more about them because they're quite modern and they've got lots of native animals featured and plants featured. I'm sure there's a story. The Stations of the Cross are lovely too. I'll get some detail of those when I go down. But what a view from up here. Yeah, so Dewey again. He got around that fella, didn't he? He did. I was um, looking into him and I just said on my video that during his stewardship, whatever you call it, yeah. over 50 years, he oversaw the construction of something like 100 churches and 400 Catholic church buildings. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, okay. Like, impressive. He must impressive. have been on the road all the time, going around to one opening after another. Yeah, his name's certainly on the foundation stones isn't it definitely it makes yeah. me feel very inadequate actually <laughs> speak for yourself i'm not even on one foundation stone are you on any foundation stone well we will be when we die yeah that's true yeah well <laughs> they'll be the on best, some sort of stone or something yeah. Hope yeah yeah i've walked past so many times when i lived in my sleep never gave it a thought never wondered what this was oh it's beautiful geez that um balustrade is really unusual Okay, all right. What, looks, what are you seeing there? Well, What's... do you think it's cast iron? It looks like cast iron, but it's, yeah, an interesting pattern. Yeah. Right. It's got like like a gothic window style in it. I've never seen that before. Okay. But the rest of it is definitely Federation style. I've got here Qu Federation Queen Anne style. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what that is, everyone, but... You know, <laughs> well, really I'm glad you asked, <laughs> <Yeah. Rob. laughs> Over to you. <laughs> um, so, Queen Anne style was um, that sort of the English Revival name, but in, in Australia what it looks like is basically buildings built of brick with terracotta roofs, fussy roof lines, okay. that st style of thing. This it has got elements of that, um, it's also got some other elements of more probably Romanesque like the church itself, sure. but the features to look for are the, those beautiful, that, that arch timber and the, the battens and the, the Union Jack co style crosses. Yeah, so yeah, that, yeah, it's interesting, hey? Good. It was quite common in the Federation era for that. And the, what are called the, I'm gonna get super nerdy on you now, architect nerd, the spandrels between the veranda posts up there. Those that's a spandrel. Yeah, that's a spandrel. So the solid style, you wanted to know that, didn't you? Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah gorgeous, very oh, ornate, wow. beautiful. So this fantastic building behind me here, is the former, now I've got to read this because it's a really long name, the Our Lady Help of the Christians Convent. So it was a convent where the Order of Nuns lived and they also ran a, a local school and that was housed in a building next door which is now used as the parish office. But this building was designed by T.R. Hall. He was a well-known Brisbane architect and he actually um, did a number of buildings for the Catholic Church. I was so excited just to have a look at this place, but we've just been given permission to have a look around inside. So I'm just about peeing my pants with excitement. So come on, come with us, let's have a look. Oh my gosh, this place is incredible. Wow. Absolutely stunning. There's Rob reading the foundation stone over there. Let me guess, Dewey was involved. Was Dewey involved? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. thought so. Yep, there he is, Archbishop Dewey. Love your work. a little bit neglected but wow what a stunning place gorgeous oh don't mind if i do I'm being beckoned. okay you are gonna flip out oh do you need to get it on camera maybe you don't you go first okay i'm going in oh wow look at this lead light for a start oh i was gonna say oh my god oh what this is insane oh my gosh this is just beautiful this must have been the um private chapel of the nuns in here oh my god oh 
spectacular is that lead light? Oh my gosh, I almost missed that. Just happened to step up here and see it. And the windows on the side are absolutely stunning as well. Oh my goodness, this plaster work is incredible and it's in such beautiful condition too. Amazing. It's not a ghost, that's just Rob. Gorgeous. This is just stunning. Look at these LED lights in these doors. I'm going to need a stiff drink after this from all the excitement. Look at th oh, this chunky timber. It looks like maybe silky oak. And the old PowerPoints. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. Okay, this has just made my day. This is awesome. Am I going to go down the creepy stairs? You know I am. Hey, Rob. I'm just going down into the basement. I'm not back in 20 minutes. I've been murdered. I know, I'm coming. I just said that Rob will go without me in a minute and that I could spend all day in here. <laughs> you stay here, I'll do the rest of the video. Okay. Right. I've got sore cheeks from smiling so much. It's so awesome. That's great. That's awesome. Look at these handles. Oh, yeah. Very Art Nouveau, which was sort of popular around the same time as the um, Federation era oh, architecture. Great. So how are you feeling about this place? Let's, uh, honest thoughts. I... I don't even know where to start, Rob. This is so overwhelming. This place is incredible. And I, I feel so lucky that we've got to have a look in here. Thank you. I wouldn't have got in here otherwise, but it is something so special. And what a hidden gem. You wouldn't necessarily expect yeah, it to be yeah. this impressive mm. inside. I mean, this is where nuns lived effectively. Mm. And yeah, it's, this is a convent. You know, yeah. it's, it's absolutely stunning. A lot of the ones I've seen are, are quite um, austere and that type of thing, but this oh. is amazing. Just a trap for young players to hit record. Rookie, Rookie error. Rookie. <laughs> Just embarrass myself in front of Rob. Yeah, <laughs> Making a thousand, a thousand <laughs> people yeah. watching at home. We'll just edit that out. No one will ever know. No one will know. <laughs> We're heading back down to Maris, the Maris, Maris Brothers School. And this is actually one of my favorite buildings in the school, this one. Absolutely gorgeous. So this is a post-war style or sort of started in the 40s-ish functionalist style and these are characterized by the horizontal lines and the stripped back style with minimal decoration so if you compare it to some of the buildings we've just been looking at with all their fancy pants plaster work and decoration and statues and arches you can see that this is quite minimalist in style and I don't know, I really like this style of building about this building, another gorgeous building. We're thinking maybe it's where the, the brother, the actual Maris brothers lived, the monks that ran the school. I can see a plaque, Rob. Brothers Monastery, stately building was, was built as a monastery, it was opened in 1929. Okay. Something, 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 something. Something, something, Dewey, something, something. Yeah, that's right, the old happily <laughs> ever after. 
I'm gonna sneak up the stairs and have a look at the clock okay. up here. Try not to trip. Oh, there you go. It says Maris Brothers Monastery. Oh, there you go, Dewey. He's back. And again, top of the hill, there's the Sacred Heart Church over there. Beautiful views. And we'll turn this one to Nash. And we're going to go find a tram terminus. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> oh, here's a good example of a cute little worker's cottage. These would have been for sort of tradespeople, that type of demographic. That's your worker's cottages. Isn't worker's it? cottages, yep. Yeah. So these tram shelters were built all throughout Brisbane and you might recognise a few of them. Some like this one have had the um, edges cut off along the road as the roads have been widened. But they're a really common design and I love the fact that they are still in use as bus shelters all over the town. I also love that a lot of them have the original timber seats. So cool. And they're actually sort of similarly constructed to uh, domestic houses so you've got your VJ boards at the back there and beautiful beautiful terracotta tile roofs let me know in the comments where you've seen other examples of these tram shelters like I said they're scattered all throughout Brisbane This is the former Rosalie Community Kindergarten and Preschool built in 1935 and it's still in use as a kindergarten which I think is quite amazing. That's almost 90 years later. Very interesting and it sort of represented a shift in the attitudes towards children. They were, they had been in the Victorian era very much second class citizens, um, you know, don't be seen and don't be heard in a lot of cases and this represented a shift to offering them a, a sort of a, a more fulfilling childhood in terms of you know nutritious meals open and airy places to play that type of thing so quite a quite a shift in the mentality of behind raising kids and also a shift in sort of community child care a lot of it was done informally in the past very interesting and now you know child, child care and kindergarten is something most people can't live without the fact that it's still a kindergarten is incredible yeah it's like not almost 90 years and it's been in the same use ever since. And I, I think, you know, that speaks to what a good design it was to start with, doesn't That's it? Right, that it was yeah. purpose built for that and yeah. still in use. Normally these things end up being architects' offices or yeah, yeah. that sort of thing. It's interesting, it's quite like it, it looks like a house, really, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's so, sort of a, a nice scale. It's on a human scale. Yeah, human scale, yeah. exactly. Across the road from the what was built as the Rosalie School of Arts and Commemorative Hall. Now a School of Arts was sort of a shared space, a bit, it's, most of them had libraries and some of them became libraries. There's what, an example at Corinda of that. But basically these were community spaces and they originated as a concept in England as mechanics institutes. And these were places that were built uh, to basically encourage the working classes to improve themselves so they could come there and read for free and borrow books at a time where books were very expensive and out of the reach of most people and it was also a space where social gatherings were held and they often incorporated a hall. What's interesting about this one was that it was built as a memorial hall as well so it opened in 1928 and this was still a time after the second uh, first world war where people were grieving the loss of many 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 people overseas and it was a time where a lot of memorials were built including a lot of buildings that were built in honor of those that had fallen and on top of that it's a, it's a gorgeous building and it was used as a theater for a time as well I'll just continue walking along and try and find Rob 
I think I read too that they put the shops underneath as well as a way to help raise revenue. And it was later, I think it still is, an RSL hall. We just stumbled across this beautiful substation and it's painted by Deborah Hood, who is an awesome Brisbane artist and also a lovely woman. And she is known for her paintings of gorgeous Queenslander houses. Check out her stuff if you don't know it already. She's got gorgeous paintings of our suburbs and also lots of cool merch like earrings and, and um, brooches and things. So bright and happy, like all her art. I love it. Glad I stumbled across it. This is the former Gospel Hall at Rosalie. I'm hoping Rob knows something about it because I don't. I hope I know something about it too because I can't find my notes on it. Yeah, so um, let's just make something up. Oh, 1922. Okay. 1922, that's all I got. Okay. So this was where the original red jacket swap was? Somewhere on this site? This whole area this here. This whole area, yep. This was all, in fact, it was bigger originally and you had a couple of different streams and marshy areas flowing into it would collect here and it was quite a big open body of water in fact it was so big it was set aside as a water reserve on some of the old maps the water then flowed outwards to the south and connected to the brisbane river but it flooded so much and especially when they put the school there they started filling it in and then it would flood and they'd fill it in more and it would flood again and it still floods today so I love how stop it. I love how they went. Oh, where are we going to build a school? Oh, well, yeah. this swampy land's free. Let's build it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might not be a swamp anymore, but it's still very squelchy underfoot, especially after all the rain we've had. And this is Gregory Park. Rob's found some friends or fans, probably fans. This is Gregory Park, and then we have in the background Milton State School. Talk more about that in a little bit. Squelch, 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 squelch. So we're here in Gregory Park and we're just looking across to the Milton State School. This school was originally called the Rosalie School and it was built on the site of what was the Red Jacket Swamp. I think from memory that, um, not surprisingly, the swampy land was very cheap or free and they decided to build the school here which um, they've probably regretted ever since. But it's quite a remarkable school and it's got one of these big multi-story brick buildings which you see around a few state schools in Queensland but when I think state schools I think about the ones I went to which were basically those um, sort of single high set timber and tin places that look similar to our houses and they're very instantly recognizable wherever you see them because most of them were standard plans but in the 1930s they started to build these more substantial and impressive brick state school buildings this one was uh, it started construction in about 1935 and it was finished by 1937 this was the middle of the depression in australia and what the government did so it was built by the department of public works and what they started to do was start this program of government building to spur on the economy basically and to provide employment for people that were out of work and one of the ways they did this was through getting them to do uh, repair work, maintenance work to school buildings. Rob's just sneaking in the background. <laughs> um, Are you filming? Yeah, I think so. I hope so. Mm. Yep, okay. Yeah. What was I saying? Um, <laughs> so they were getting unemployed men to do work around the grounds in a number of state schools and do landscaping work, that type of thing. It was providing them with work, but it was also beautifying these schools as well. Did you know, during the Second World War, they built air raid shelters in Gregory Park for the students of the state school? That was very big of them, wasn't it? It was, but apparently it was like, there was some deal where 
like only the kids that attended the school could use them or something like this so it got a little bit discriminatory what? like so it? a lot of the kids were staying home from school and they weren't allowed to use them something something like that i thought you were going to say if you got like a minus or above <laughs> yeah. you could be in the bomb shelter if you've yeah. got to be yeah you've no. got to take your chances yeah. with no, the you're japanese gone. bombs yeah okay all right <laughs> So when they built the brick building, they basically demolished all the other earlier timber buildings on the site, except for this one. I think it was 1923 this one was built, but they did move it on the site. This is the beautiful Depression era 1930s school building. You compare it to the earlier timber ones like the one I just showed you, you can see how really impressive they would have been and substantial. They look in comparison. It's almost more like a private school, isn't it? Never really looked at it before. Yeah, there's a cute there's a few um few of them around Brisbane but they none of them are quite the same but they do share sim similarities we're strolling up Howard Street now there's quite a few houses on this street that are of interest and one of them is Baruna that gives Baruna Road its name what I've loved about walking around is and I said this to Rob earlier, not only is there on the one street a mix of sort of working class and fancy mansions, but you also get now a mix of eras of architecture. So you've got like a post-war place over here, maybe 1960s, right next to some really early homes. It's um, yeah, quite an interesting mix, quite a nice enclave or microcosm of different house styles. That sounded super nerdy. nerdy. I said microcosm, Rob. Microcosm, that's the word of the day. Yeah. This is up on the top of Howard Street and it gives you a great view over Rosalie. You can see the Sacred Heart Church up there, Maris Brothers and the monastery we went to earlier. And yeah, some gorgeous old places. But this is the one we came to see across the road. This is Glentworth. So I'm not sure when exactly this one was built. Sometime between when the land was bought in 1879 and then the Perry family are recorded as living here by 1885. Beautiful place still in huge grounds which is awesome it's a bit hard to see but this is Boona not a bad view that's for sure yeah it's, it's absolutely spectacular gorgeous street isn't it yep. So this is Baruna. It gives its name to the street and the municipality. It's a gorgeous house. It was the, the original parts of it were built in about 1866. So it's built around the same time as Fernberg government house and by the same architect, Benjamin Backhouse. So quite a difference in style, but both of them equally gorgeous. Just having a sneaky peek through the gate to see what we can see. Don't want to intrude too much. Gorgeous place. And look at the views from here. Incredible. Well, that brings us to the end of this wander around Rosalie, or roam around Rosalie, that's better. Roam yeah, around like Rosalie, yeah. yeah. We're back at Fernberg, and yeah, hope you've enjoyed coming on this little trip with us and enjoyed seeing some of the cool historical buildings and places around the area. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you haven't already subscribed, please do and hit that like button. And if you're one of the very few people who don't already follow Walkabout with Rob's channel, <laughs> make sure you do. Thanks, oh, Rob. Thank Thanks for inviting so me. It's been great. You're welcome.